nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 30 in our series nerddice.com, where we build a Rail, Ruby on Rails 7 application for tabletop role playing management. And we are still a coding channel. Uh, over the, the holidays, I extracted out some of the mediocre karaoke from the retrospectives and published them as separate videos, but um, that will just happen once per, re per retro now. And uh, we're back in the saddle, uh, continuing to kind of knock out some of the loose ends we had from our devise epic where we set up uh, devise the ruby gem for dealing with our apps auth our applications authentication there i can speak so one of the things that we did throughout there was doing some basic tailwind stuff to get the device views working with it. So if I go in and fire up my my dev server here we kind of just did the bare minimum to make them unbroken in uh, we had a couple of videos associated with this. We had a, uh, a get device views working with Tailwind video where we kind of created uh, components and helpers and stuff like that. And we also had a second video where we got a, a pull request from, from a viewer making some recommendations. And uh, we, we did some, uh, incorporated some of that feedback and, and did some fixes off of that. So one of the other things we did was throw a to-do into our backlog to, uh, let me see if I can get this in a new tab, uh, to deal with the fact that the positioning right now, if we look at the helper components, no, that is not, we don't want controllers, we want helpers. Tailwind helper. So right now you've got some stuff here like margin top, margin bottom, things like that. That really shouldn't like I'm making a contract with myself here should not be part of the uh, the helper tailwind component itself. That the the components border should be the end of it. So at the after the border, it's the calling. Uh, views job to get it positioned relative to the other uh, elements on the on the page because because otherwise you, you you lose the ability to uh, take away any of that margin if you're doing it the other way so that's what we're gonna do here uh, in addition so here's an example of what our before and after will look like so right now we've got uh, submit update class tailwind success button um, in the future, it will be class. We'll put the margin outside of it, any other positioning outside of it, and then we'll interpolate that um, to make it work. In addition, we also want to kind of start getting to work on our source code structure. So you've got the Tailwind helper class here. The join classes method would stay, but like the header. Uh, stuff, the link, uh, decoration, um, kind of the the buttons would all kind of start getting into their own smaller source code files rather than uh, having one giant helper file to rule them all. So that's what we're going to tackle in this video. We've got our issue set in progress. I will make sure that we're up to date with Git here. And our, our goal here is parity. So like it, the, the elements on the page um, should not move from where they are uh, based on what we're doing in this, uh, this story. It should be um, invisible in terms of the uh, change a change to what the user sees here. So we are on main. Call it 
check out a new branch called refactor tailwind um, there might be other future uh, actually well uh, check back out domain we'll call it feature re nah, we'll just leave it as is so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make our tests fail when um, test tailwind helper test uh, we'll wind up essentially getting these working with the um, the bigger version of the the test files and then um, we will then go in and um, break them down into smaller units so we'll just start looking for for example here margin top margin bottom uh, and that looks like a common set here So all of our buttons, we'll see. Yeah, it's the, the buttons only that would be affected by this. So the other, the H1, the H2, all that stuff, it's the, the three button methods that would be affected by that. I'm gonna actually go in first and modify the views um, where these buttons are found so we'll go to our search here and it gives us all the places where this is existing so let's see if we've got a consistent implementation of it looks like we do other than in the test file itself so but even there that doesn't have the class colon there so we should be able to do a replace cross our whole code base Figure out. I'll pause and figure out how to do this in VS Code real quick. All right. So the um, how to toggle our places. You can just do toggle our place there, or you can do Control Shift H or Command Shift H if you're on a Mac. Uh, and now I should be able to take TW Success button and replace it with the. changes to the margin there and then we'll use Ruby and in string interpolation that should give us what we're intending to do see what we've got here that gives us what we want that's the replace preview and we control alt enter to actually replace it let's take a look at our app here so we go to sign up. This has a button. 
So we'd expect this to move up and the other text to move up a bit when we remove this. And then once we fix it, it will move back down. So we will do the, the replace here. Let's see. take an effect. Now when I refresh the page this should scrunch up some. Oh no because it's redundant so the the it essentially got the margin top in the margin uh, bottom in the source twice. So if we go and look at the source here right now it will have margin top margin bottom and then margin top, margin bottom, and since they're uh, redundant of the same things, uh, we don't see a change there. So now I should be able to go and remove this from our test class here. Place with nothing. Save that. Our test will fail now. All three of them will. So we've got three failures. So now we go in to our Tailwind helper. and do the same change there. Actually, it's Tailwind helper test that we should have done this first in. Now we'll replace that with nothing. So we kind of did our test-driven development backwards in terms of how we executed it, but we had failing tests, made changes, had failing tasks, tests, and now um, we run the tests, and they are um, back to passing. We should now be able to refresh our page and not see a change other than the uh, the redundant margin top, margin bottom will now be gone. We need to make the same changes for cancel button and alert button because now we've taken away those and those now I would expect to see all scrunched up like we were talking about with the, um, the other stuff. So we'll um, log in here. Log in. Now we see the, um, the cancel button is kind of scrunched up more than we want. So we want to do the same thing that we did with the success button. And then we'll have to do that with the cancel button. Make sure to put the, the same uh, value in that find and the replace there. So now refresh and this should space out a little bit like a pixel, but yeah, so it's back to where it should be. And then we've also got the alert button. That's in our manager account there, so that is spaced as we'd expect there. 
again, I haven't gone through and actually done any careful de visual designing on this yet. This is just kind of the baseline and um, refactoring it so that it is easier to maintain in the future when we actually go in and start doing design work on it. So I think that concludes the changes we wanted to make there. We will rerun our tests. We will make sure Rubocop is not newly upset. All right, so I'm going to, um, since we've made progress here, I'm going to commit what we've got um, in the end, I'll squash them down and do a single um, commit to make sure that like, we don't need to um, clutter with um, granular commits here, but um, we've kind of got a save point that we want to uh, maintain and be able to fall back to in the event that we um, mess something up. So just throw in the message I'm not even going to sign the commit you will we'll deal with that when we squash it and push it all right now we got the refactor working and what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the changes between the tests and the uh, the application code. So we're going to go and make the changes first to the application code so that um, we will um, not change two things at once, change everything at once, and you could potentially get a false positive of uh, passing or failing there if you did it that way. So we'll go... got this tailwind helper directory and we will essentially take what we've got here and we'll create a button helper and a typography helper. All right, so So the typography helper should have that the join classes will stay in the parent, the buttons will be gone. And then we'll, at the end, we'll get the, um, the commenting updated on all three of these. So now we should be able to go into, we'll, I'll do the same thing with the button helper here.
that. Now I'll keep the three button methods. Save that and I'm going to now remove this code from the Tailwind helper, which will cause things to fail because we're not including the, uh, the code back in there. Join classes stays in. All right, so I would expect that right now things are going to be and look broken maybe not even be able to um, load the page here. No, that. Did I save everything? Tailwind helper, button helper, typography helper. So we do have errors. Undefined local variable or method is occurring here. In all of our tests. So that is what I would expect. So now we want to might have to also require them, although Rails might just require relative on it. Nope, that's enough to get us back to passing. All right, I'm going to do one more level of refactoring here on the button helper. Um, actually, I'm going to do it on both of the um, Um, yeah, this is the button helper and then the typography helper. I don't think I'll go quite that, that level yet, but, um, in the, the button helper, I'm going to create a, Base button that deals with some most of the, um, the things that we've got that are um, common to all three of these things. So uh, I will go in. I guess I'll, I'll pause and just implement the test, and then I'll um, implement the method. All right. So I've got my new failing uh, new test that I would expect to fail because the method doesn't exist yet. Or actually error out. Undefined local variable will save the empty implementation, which should upgrade our error to a failure. Now we've got a failure, so we should be able to now Get the the items we want there. That should get us passing. It does not. Want semi bold. Join classes.
that gets us back to passing. Now we want to incorporate this with our success button and our cancel button, alert button. So we're going to take these um, the font semi bold out. We're going to take the P, the padding and the rounded out. This is not going to be correct in its current state, so we're going to run this and get a bunch of failures. Which is what we would expect. So now we want to essentially incorporate The, the full list of classes that we've got. So right now, we've got all this and we're going to, going to uh, want to take, this is returning us a string. This is returning us a string. We're going to probably wind up uh, fixing the test class to we don't really care about the order that these uh, occur in uh, so we're going to invoke the success button Let's make it ugly first should, other than the order being wrong, get us to working in ugly. I'm certain that Rubocop will not want the font, the, the, co the classes. In that, uh, that format, that source code format is ugly. Um, we'll see if Rubocop just auto formats it for us before I go and um, make it special. The so now we need all of these are going to have this amount this stuff prepended. So it's essentially taking the um, the padding and rounded aspects of these. Just for now, make it all one long string, and then we'll um, deal with the the formatting and stuff later. I'll pause and just finish this off. Um, no need to watch me type. All right, so I think I've got the the content correct, irrespective of the formatting. Let's see if I did. I'm still failing on all three of these. Make sure I've got them all both saved here. Oh, I put the base button 
last. That is easy enough to remedy. Does that get us back to passing? Down to two failures. And large. All right. Is my expectation or my actual wrong there? Cancel button and the alert button. Cancel button. Alert button. Missing rounded large. On both of those. Now, I expect that we should be passing. All right, for passing, uh, Rubocop is going to throw a conniption and shoot my dog. As well they should. This is ugly source code formatting. Only one of them is autocorrectable. Interpolation over concatenation, that all makes sense. All right. We'll let our one uh, Autocorrection take place here. So we should be down to seven offenses. And it'll be more like string existing. Let's make sure our all right we're down to four. Make sure our test didn't start failing because of this. All right. Tests are still passing and then all of our um, 
top level documentation comment. We'll just move those and then we've got line length issues. So in our they're both in our tailwind helper test. something along those lines. All right, so now let's see, make sure Everything still compiles and passes. Let's see how Rubocop's feeling about this. Two are auto correctable. That's alignment. Now we're just missing our documentation comments. probably solve that by moving our comment here. Let's see if that gets us down to one. does so that is how Rubocop prefers to have our commenting done all right so now we should be back to Rubocop neutral. And we are. So we will um, got that secondary commit there. Now the last thing we want to do is essentially have our test suite match what we've got in um, in our helper directory here. So we've got test helpers Our most recent run before we move this. Make sure we've got the same number of tests going on here. So 12 ones thir runs 31 assertions is what we're looking for. And we'll create a new file here. Similar to before, we're going to copy the 
this down. It's going to be How do we do it with device? Add module device. So we'll do the same thing with our Tailwind helper items here. So it will be button helper test and Topography helper test, which will just, I guess we'll do this one first and then copy it. So this will be and then everything goes two spaces to the right, which probably makes RuboCop unhappy about line length again, such as it is. So that's our button helper test. We'll do the same thing for our typography helper test. Make sure we name it correctly All right, so we'll take the button ones out of this one we'll take the typography ones out of this one And then we'll take them all out of here. I will add an independent test for the, um, the join classes method in a second here. Let's just see if we're at parity. We are at... Module Tailwind Helper, Typography Helper is not a class. What have I done? Helpers, tailwind helper test. And then I've added in give me a moment here. So that type error line ten. Test button helper test. Try it again. All right. Undefined method join classes for tailwind button helper test. So we need to, in this case, see if that solves our, oh, 
know that's all of these should include test helper, right? Take a look at our controller require test helper. Let's see if that solves our problems. It still does not. Undefined method join classes. if we can if that helps us at all all right I will pause and take a quick look at the um, the stack trace on these errors all right so I think I've isolated the problem so if we go here right now I'm including tailwind helper typography helper but if I just include tailwind helper that should get me from seven down to four. And then if I do the same thing on button helper, that should get me from four down to zero, I hope. And it does. So that uh, solves that problem. Now we want to um, write an individual test for um, the join classes method. equal And that should increase us from to 13 and 32, I think, in terms of our assertions. It does. It passes. So we will, while we're at it, see whether that indentation got Rubocop mad. It did, but they're all auto-correctable. I 
make sure there wasn't any collateral damage from that. We look like we're good. And then we want to update our comments. So I'll pause and do that and just kind of talk through what I did. Actually, I'll commit and then pause and so get status, get add. So now we're going to go through, we'll do a git diff, actually we'll just, I'll go in and pause and update the comments and then we'll, uh, we'll talk through the next step, which would be to run our, um, actually I'll kick off a full test run um, and then at, at the end of this so that the system tests and everything are there and it's we're not just sitting waiting for me to run those. All right, so the system tests all ran fine. And then in terms of the documentation comments, I got rid of the to-do here, um, provide a little bit more clarity around the um, the sub modules and everything um, and the uh, the pat pattern of uh, not including the um, the margin as uh, part of the component. Uh, I flipped the um, button helper and typography helper includes here to make them alphabetical and then kind of added comments for the the various items and on the test side, I didn't really change that much other than saying, like it used to say, if we do this, uh, break it down, then follow the structure. Now it says these things are broken down, follow the structure. And the other ones just kind of say, um, refer to the parent for more info. So I think that gives us what we are looking for in terms of our acceptance criteria for the story. We'll, So now I've got a working clean working directory. Doing close all of our files. Make sure that we've didn't leave any unsaved. Hold on. We did leave one unsaved. These are all not, so we'll alright. So now we'll rebase against main. I'm going to do a, an amend with a sign, signed commit afterwards. So for right now, it's just going to be uh, re replace pick with F. Make them all fix up commits. Which get us down to one commit here, which it does. And now. Um, do a git diff main. So we've changed our comments. We've 
gotten rid of these items and are mostly just including those two breakdown helpers. We added that stuff there, the two new modules. We went and changed our implementation in our view files, which is what we needed to do. We refactored things out into the, uh, the smaller, more focused test methods. We added a test for join classes, and that's it. So now I'm going to amend, assign it, date equals now. So I'll write my commit message. All right, I've got my commit message. Save it. Now we should be able to push. So we've got our branch there, which we will see. That will go into main. Everything's looking, looking good. our action. I'll pause and let that um, finish and then uh, we'll merge it in, update the project, and then um, push to main. Uh, typically, unless something goes wrong with the build after that last merge into main, I just end the video and I'll bring it back up as an addendum if it um, fails for whatever reason. Alright, our build is green on our branch pull request is looking good let's make sure all the checks succeeded they did so we'll go in Check out main, git merge, refactor tailwind, push. That closes our pull request. our issue. I think that moves our task to done on the backlog. And while we're waiting here, I'll just tidy up some branches here. that one do the same thing with our refactor tail branch wind branch all right and then our action probably still running will uh, Assume that it will work, and I'll see you in the next video. 
Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.